to today's uh, class discussion. And, uh, I believe we'll be able to make good impact. Uh, but before I go ahead, uh, let me just ask this question that, uh, yes, I know the AMCOM staff, uh, the HR has given a brief as to what we'll be looking at or discuss. But let me ask, um, what will have been your major, or what is your major expectation from a discussion of this nature, effective marketing and selling strategy for property and real estate, focusing on customer profile. So you could just do me a yard, drop your expectation that I would like that, so that I would like to, to read from you. So please, the first person to drop your message in the chat box. I'm looking at that because I have gifts for people. I always have gifts, you know. All right. So I'm waiting to see, to read from you. I want to be sure we are also here. Please, can we have reactions from the chat? I think oh, your, like, your expectation. Baba, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. If you are Hello, here, what? I need you to drop something. I'm expecting everybody to drop something. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, please respond to my request. What is your expectation from this class? Just drop, just a short line, just a short line, everybody. Who's going first? I have a gift for who's going first. Uh, We're tapping first. already. Dara can show you. It does. It does. Okay. It does. Peter is first to make the cap. Okay, expectation is to be refreshed and updated on marketing strategy techniques. Good, good, more. You want the price? Don't worry, Peter. Get the price to you as usual. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, don't... It's a way to dispose and set, okay? Want... Keep it coming, keep it. Don't wait to read someone's ass on. Yeah, how I can close this successfully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Wait for two more and I will go ahead. Keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming. Keep it coming. We are 31 on this uh, in this class, so I was like expect 31 questions or responses. Yeah. Okay, so, so let's get going. Okay, so as I established or destroyed, I mentioned earlier by Lina, we we'll try to see how we can achieve all of this, you know, uh, objectives at the end of the day, and uh, we can get better and uh, achieve more results on the job and these are the things we are looking so our delivery close sales better like some of you have uh, mentioned uh identify how best to define your prospective customers able to identify better fit prospect able to lower customer acquisition costs better empowered to serve customers better reduce customer churn and achieve more results faster and profitable to your organization so then uh, I did mention that our discussion, yes, is uh, effective marketing and sales or property real estate, but the emphasis will be on customer profiling. And the reason for this is why this topic and why we want to center our discussion around customer profiling is essentially because quite a number of us have been involved in sales training, marketing training. We've had some of the four P's, 10 P's. We, We've learned about you know some of the strategy. We've deployed them actually. We've used them 
we want him some fair results. We want more results. We, we, we are like, uh, is there no other way to achieve this? But of course, yeah, like you know, everything about marketing sales also centered about the customer. And you will have had several needs that uh, consumer or the consumer is the king. And have you asked yourself, when you hear customer is the king or consumer is the king, what really comes to your mind? What does it mean with you? What does it define to you? How do you see it? And how have you been applying you know, your understanding of the customer is the king, all right, um, to your sales, marketing, effort, activities. So, and so those are the things we want to look at because uh, when you say someone is a king, then there's so much to that person. So we're going to look at it, our sales and marketing effort from the angle of the one we have defined as a king. I would appreciate if somebody can tell me what you understand when we say customer is a king. What do you understand? If somebody could drop something, I'd love to read from that person. What do you understand when we say customer is a king, consumer is a king? What's your own understanding of that? All right. Now, let me say this class is going to be a, a very engaging and interactive class because we are not going to be doing maturing. We're going to be doing, dealing with uh, practicals, things that we can get better, things that as we are even in the class, we can begin to apply because, Mark, you you are uh, in a virtual class. So I think usually when we are in virtual class, we we, take, we try, tend to, to use that opportunity to do some other things. But uh, again, multitasking is fantastic, but the truth is that if you really want to get all the best of the best, then probably you need maximum attention. But can somebody answer that for me? What is your understanding when we say customer is the king? When we say customer is the king, what do you, I mean, don't take about that? How do you analyze that? I'd like to read from someone first in the chat room. And if you want to really unmute yourself, I don't mind. Maybe that will be faster for some of us. Uh, I think you can unmute yourself and speak uh, if you want to answer that question. Customer is the king. Why? Why customer is the king? The customer called the shot. Without the customer, we are no business. Fantastic. All right, so who else again? Who else again? Nina, thank you for that. Who else again? Customer is the king. It means without the customer, no business. Okay, innocent. That's what you can pick. That's good. Okay, Tony. It means customer satisfaction is key. Fantastic. All right. More, 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 more. Pour it out. Pour it out. What you? What? What is your customer is the king? What? What? What has always been your own take about that? What has always been your own, you know, resolution as to that? How do you have been always treating that? Right. I mean, it, it's no longer in, a news to us. We've had it in several training. We've listened to people saying to us, customer is the king. So what do you make of customer as a king? I'd like to read from you, okay? Put it in, put it in, if you can put it in. Then I'll share my thoughts when we say customer as a king. I can I like, get two more responses and then I can uh, fire you, please. Let's make it very interactive for ourselves. I love to read for as many of us as possible. Don't just turn on your, your device and then get busy or walk away from your system. I want us to be very, very, very committed in interactive in this class. We will run from 9.30, we will go for a short break, and then we'll come back to complete the class. We intend to wrap up everything on the 12th dots, so no wasting time. Okay, so if I'm not getting more responses, then I will go ahead, no problem. Okay, so when we say customer is a king, then you need to define who is a king, who a king is, or what is the definition of a king or what makes a king a king? All right. So whether you are part of this planet or another planet, you are part of this side of the world in Nigeria or anywhere in the world, wherever you 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 I mean you see or hear about a king, there are things that describe who a king is, or there are things that make a king a king. All right, there are some level of authority, there are some level of uh, you know uh, dominance, there are some uh, I want to call it influence. There are quite a number of things that make that person a king. It means he rule over a certain territory. But more than that, it means that when you see a king in Yoruba land, is called Oba. In uh, I think in uh, some other local land, perhaps it's called a king or called uh, maybe you, I'm not sure. We refer to is that what does that describe a king? Ooh, anemia, I think so, yes, yes, anemia is a king too, when you come to it, and you have kings and you have kingdoms, okay, so a king rules over the kingdom, and a king, because of the authority and uh, 
all the what is accorded to him so you make him a king and perhaps maybe a ruler okay but one thing is it that is very very paramount and important for a king or anyone that's a king is the fact that is the fact that people honor them people serve them people pay respect to them now people do things they want done not what people want done but what the king want done and how they want it done so what am i saying in essence is that you serve the king based on how he wants it done not how you think because if you do it the other way around you might likely be sanctioned you might face the consequence you might even call it abomination in some other places so you need to then know for you to serve a king there is further for you to understand how the king wants it what the king wants what are the favorites what are the you know what are the things that make the kings happy so if you don't understand how the king are or attended to everything anything you do, even when you feel is the best in your own judgment, I mean judgment, or in your own perspective, or perspective, ultimately it will be rubbish. And then you find out that, oh, so all my effort, I just go down the line, it, it doesn't mean that uh, I'm, uh, I'm not doing it well, or some of us will say, maybe you are being robbed. some will say, oh, why this i think i was putting my effort to, to make you comfortable as a king to to make you the best to make you happy but at the end of the day it appears all my efforts are i mean are infertility so in that sense for you to serve a king you must understand what the king wants and how he wants it and that's what we are saying so it means that a customer that we have described as a king has need and he, there is a, I mean, that's how he wants to be served. Now, of course, uh, sometimes we say, even though customer is a king, but there are limitations to his uh, authority or to, to his kingdom or to his kingship. Yes, that you may have, a, I mean, fact, but the truth is that if you consistently do it all the way around, because you feel that should be limitation, then you will probably not be getting the best out of that Person. So what I'm saying then, the customer is a king because the customer has a need and they say their need, there's a way they want their need met. So what we say or what we do with marketing essentially is to process and try to discover what are the needs of the king, what are the needs of the market, of the customers, how do they want to be served? So what I'm saying in emphasis is that you have listened to different marketing, you know, discussions, analysis, but we have tried to build strategy. We have tried to build tactics. We have tried to build, uh, you know, uh, different dynamics matrix on how we think we want to deliver our service, our products. We they believe that the customer will like it, all right? But we have not taken too much time to look at the customer itself, who we are described as a king. This customer, can we approach this person? Can we go into conversation with this person? Can we engage this person and get to know what exactly is the middle? of? What, how is this described? How is it defined? What is his taste board? What are the things in life? What are his color? What are you know, all those things? And that's what we're trying to examine and analyze this morning. So what then is, or how have I defined when I say customer profiling? Okay, so I've tried to give us some common, you know, definition here. I say a technique by which customers are grouped according to geography, demographic, behavior, needs, and want. Profiling allows key customers group to be targeted based on their engagement with the service. Okay, customers are targeted using communication channels that are most likely to be perceived by the customer you are trying to reach. Also, customer profiling outlines the types of customer likely to purchase your products, what they want, and why feature benefits that most, that matter most 
and messaging that will help them find you it enables highly targeted marketing and essential analysis tool is allow you to concentrate on real matter or real potential customer saving you time and money and that's what we want to do this morning how we can save ourselves save our organization time and money right again we look at it say if you don't build id customer your id customer now if you don't build customer profile your, your, your strategy will be hit and miss and you won't get a strong return on investment for your marketing efforts you will always be giving your competition a real competitive edge because this is what serving organizers for me do. So for us in Namcon and every other organization that we probably represent, we need to discover and identify our IT customers. You know, sometimes we find some of us cry or feel pain that marketing is tough. I want to leave marketing department. I don't want to do marketing again because we most times find it hard to close sales, find it hard to get results. And then we, we don't always get comfortable with that. But the truth is that if you, do, if you are not dealing with the IG customer, then you will continuously you know, have a, a miss, a miss, a miss uh, situation. And that can really lead to frustration. I can agree with you. And it can also lead to a situation whereby you use all your you know, enthusiasm and strength and skill and energy. Okay, but today I believe you will get better and we can know better. So knowing the customer is in this depth allows you to deliver the precise solution to meet your customer need. It enables you to offer products at the right location, at the right price, and deliver the right features and support to create, to create positive buying experience to the customer profile. The customer profile is the representative of customer in a target market. They are based on, they are based on knowledge of real users. Some form of research are conducted. Now, so what we are saying now is that now, there are things you must do that are when you need to profile that prospective customer before you launch out, before you go out all out, before you deploy all your resources, there are things you must do, all right, to, uh, to give you some greater percentage of uh, assurance that if you, if you eat, you meet your target. And that's what we're trying to analyze. So first, you must be able to identify who they are, how your customer think, what they do, and where they operate. Okay, you must also understand the nature of products you are selling, which will get there in depth actually. But for us in uh, management, sales, property, you know, uh, even if you take uh, Abraham Maslow's theory of need and what I mean, of course, shelter is a major one. But you also understand that when we talk, when you say shelter, it's also to the extent of the your availability, I mean affordability, because shelter could be anywhere, could be described anyway, anyhow, in any form. Now, so when you are we talking more about lo, I mean luxurious, uh, you know, asset here, expensive asset here. When you need to drive or your sales, then you need to be sure that the very person, the very customer you are targeting, you have a clear understanding as to how they do their things what they want, they are thinking, they are, you know, everything around them. So you are able to bring, you know, their name, personality, you know, into a kind of a diagram, which we can show a photo, you know, like for instance, that you, you pick someone and then you begin to diagnose that person. So the extent that you are able to have enough information that you feel you are convinced that by the time you approach this person, you probably, almost gets a yes. All right, so that's what we are trying to emphasize. So customer power profiling helps guide decision on marketing the business. Okay, okay. let's go ahead. So what is a customer profile? Okay, some of the things or uh, elements that we use are details that you can capture as part of analyzing your customer profile, including the age, the location, the hobbies, job title, income, purchasing habits, goals or motivation, challenges or pain. Now, you will agree with me that someone you don't know, perhaps someone that does not even know you, and doesn't, you don't have access to his past history and what have you, but you need to profile that person. So it can probably be a tough order. But of course, yes, for you to be able to channel your effort and energy in the right direction without wasting your resources at your disposal, then you need to get at the foundation. So just this, like example, like I said earlier, 
You pick someone and then you, you try to gather all of this information about that person. Now, these are efforts that will help you to know how best to approach the person, what kind of product or what kind of asset, what kind of property. Can you make, can you present to this person that you show that uh, you will be doing well? You, I mean, probably be sure that you will be eating the nail on the head. So you can see that analysis of knowing your customers. Okay. Now, because again, for, let me, like somebody said earlier, customer is the reason why we are in business. Now, if customer is the reason why we are in business, then you need to pay attention to that customer. You can't work or run a business believing that the customer will approach you or will come for you. There's need for you to consistently and constantly do analysis as to who are my customers. And you must also understand that your customer probably will change from time to time. So these are some of the things we also want to unravel. So how to profile your customer, I've given you a bit of analysis, but let me just emphasize here that making make one customer profile for every target market, for B2B and B2B represent business to business, okay? Because our customer obviously will be B2C and be B2B. I mean, our business to uh, consumers or customers, direct customers, and their business to business. Of course, they can patronize our products, okay? Individuals and corporate organization. And that's what I'm trying to exercise. Apply segmentation criteria. Where we'll get all of that. Also try to gain insight into the mark, target, mark, uh, target customers that do not buy your products, okay? Beware of your own assumption. And this is very critical. Because sometimes we are we over assume or over what we so much assumption that we miss the mark. So that's also very important. I may behave like an anthropologist, okay? Who is that one? Someone that study a lot about women being and, 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 and things and like that. So it's very essential for you. You know, about psychology, one thing that is very resonant and must be one of these skills every marketer, salesperson, Business development essential app is what we call, uh, you know, uh, an aspect, if not to the a, a, a deep one, okay, of a psychology. You should be able to turn it towards assumption, but be able to station or, or market or business or customers, okay. But we'll, we'll be dwelling more and analyzing some of those things. So, aim for exceptional customer experience now. Again, I mentioned earlier, for you to serve the king and the king to be happy with you, you must do a some thorough job. You must be able to understand that. You must know that the king would like to enjoy some good, you know, unusual, exceptional, you know, deliverables, quality service attention and so is every one of us here when 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 you enjoy it exceptionally there's a feel there's a touch there's a way you feel like oh you you you, you got some special attention treatment you know that resonates with you for a very long time now the truth is that for as many products that have been pitched to you that somebody has talked to you about even when you have not bought them the truth is that the memories of how that person spoke to you or discussed with you or make that presentation to you will always be there. And the truth is that, suppose you cannot afford that product, product right now, when and whenever you are able to ready or get ready to get the resources to acquire it, you will always remember that person. So research your customer and find out as much about them as possible, what problems and desire lead let them to consider that your products. Why did they choose your product over your competitors? Use whatever communication types you can: interview, survey, chat at event in the or in their uh, workplace. Now we see trying to build and gather. The, I mean, try to build something towards how we can get a very quality customer profile, and then you can work with it. When you are dealing with business to individual or customers. Okay, and I've tried to categorize that who they have, their age, their income, marital status, education, 
family size, gender, geographic location, social cycle, occupation. And somebody will like, why should I do all this? Let me just go and make sales. Yes, you can make sales. You could be lucky without doing your analysis, but you will make more sales with less effort, less waste of resources, when you take your time to prepare very well. So part of your preparation is to understand where you are going and why you should go there, who you are going to meet and why you should meet the person. Like my, one of my Indian uh, clients will tell me, say, Mr. Ayo, don't waste your time and waste my time. Much as you want to make sales, do you know that even the prospective customer you are targeting probably will be a waste of time to that person when eventually the person, you, I mean, you engage the person in the conversation and you say to that person, okay, this is the price. In his mind, you may not say it out for ego or for what they say. Why do you think I'm the right person to laugh? You're discussing with all along. You have just wasted my time. Because the guy will be like, I'm not ready for this. I don't have the resources. So why did you track me down to have taken my time? Because, you know, of course, you know, when you're making your sales pitch or marketing efforts or activity, you probably will not be talking about price. You will have bought a lot of descriptive descriptions, analysis, persuasion before you now came to the point of pricing. And then the time you're like, wow, your presentation is fantastic. But you know what? I'm not ready for this price. I can't afford it right now. So not to waste my time and waste your own time. It is better you have done your thorough analysis. And then we say, how do they think? The people that you are targeting for your luxury apartment, for the good locations, for projects or assets that are worth millions and billions of naira. How do they think? What do they do? Where do they live? Where is their location? How do they operate? How do they function? So these are very essential things that you have to do in, in, in profiling your customers. And then we we'll look at your B2B profile. We say a B2B customer profile, a profile include the demographic data of their targets. For instance, such as their company size, employee, e count, annual turnover. Of course, you should know that corporate organizations also do buy assets, they buy property, they buy real estate. So it's also very essential for you to provide them. So customer profile are often referred to as buyer personnel or user profile. Each term essentially means the same thing, but a single document, <coughs> excuse me, lists key demographic interest behavior of your target customer. And we'll get to that now. Same as we have done for the business B2C, we look at the corporate organization. What I think you should evaluate, what I think you should, you should review to be sure that this organization, you know, uh, sometimes in prospecting and in our business development effort, we write to everywhere. We send letters, send proposals, send flyers to everywhere. Now, if only you can value the loss of a fund or investment that we deploy sometimes that does not yield results. I'm sure you, you will think twice to begin to circulate those flyers, to send out those proposals, to do some of those, uh, what we call it, uh, ghost marketing. So right now we are saying it's more tactical and more strategic on how you do your marketing and sales, how you deploy the resources of your organization. And so when you have to do that with B2B, and you look at who, who they are, annual employee, industry, location, years in business, market size. You know, you do those thorough analysis based on how they think, all right, their future plans too, what they do, all right, their line of business operation and things like that, okay, and then where they operate. So that gives you a clue as to who this organization is or they are and how best to undo them or prosper to them or uh, attend to them. Okay? Hope we are still together. So if you are still together, can you just drop a yes? I hope you are together to see five yeses in the bathroom. Yes, okay. yes, we're here. 
Just drop yes, 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 yes. Let me see it. Yeah. And then if you have questions, you can raise your hand, of course, yes. You can use the raise your hand. You can stop me at any time so that we can get uh, engaging. Uh, use your hand to ask question. I, I would love to hear your voice as well. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's continue. Thank you for the yes, three yeses out of 36 yeses. All right, that's not encouraging. Are my customers still there? Are the king still there? Are they still there? Because I'm serving the king right now. The kings and the queens. <laughs> are you there? Okay, yeah. If you are with me, I would love to see the yes, 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 yes. Let it roll, let it roll. It. Okay. Okay, so segment your findings. Now, you've done all of this analysis. Of course, yeah, you know, at this point, what you are doing is try to build up your profiling data. You know, try to be sure that by the time you take a step, you are not going to like, likely have to have challenges of uh, a wrong, you know, uh, profile, I mean, prospect and what you okay, So you may find that there are a number of different types of customer and you need to segment your finance. Don't just rely on direct feedback, take note of language and the use and their uh, mannerism. Now, from the data we have explained, from the things I mentioned earlier, as regards uh, the questions or information you can gather or profiling of your either your individual customer or the corporate organizations, you'll be able to come to terms as to segmenting them. Because the truth is that you have different products, you have different property, you have different estates at different prices. Okay, it helps you. Okay, so Alani, that's I would like to hear from you. You raise your hand. Go ahead. Yes, sir, doctor. Thank you for the presentation. About uh, asking question that is, study the profile of the customer. All those uh, numerous questions, how can we get to yeah. arrange them together? You know, to me too, it's a waste of time. Like your customer always tell you, <laughs> don't waste your time, and don't waste my own time too. And, I just want you to show us yeah. a way, a simple way, where we can just gather all those profiles, you know? Look at those questions. There are many, they are cumbersome. Is there a thank particular, is there a particular yeah, um, app that we can use or a simple way that we can use to gather their, their profile? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, we will get, uh, that's why, follow up the discussion we're taking it a step at a time but the truth is once you are you do not prepare well you will end up just doing it anyhow and that's why most of the time we have not gotten the, the right result we have not gotten good results we have not got good response because we're not taking time now you said this may look like a waste of time it's not really a waste of time because you just want to be sure of the person you are going to, but how do you get it? We'll get to there now, all right? Okay, so, and that's interestingly is the next slide I'm going to discuss on. Tools for your research. How do you get it? Your question. Maybe if you are patient enough, you will probably seen that uh, that's going to form a major focus right from here. Now, number one, there are a number of tools that you can use, okay? In some organizations, we have department that deals with what we call research and development. Okay, part of their responsibility will be to help you uh, scrutinize, identify, analyze the market, analyze the environment, analyze the economy, and analyze the sectors. Okay, and they will be able to deploy so many approach or strategy in doing that. And perhaps they will just pass the end result either of survey or what have you to your department or to you, and then you can be able to work on that. But you can also do it on your own because most of these things are supposed to be individually you know, done so that you can get the best. Mark you, if your colleagues have to do it for you, and your colleagues also have target to achieve. Of course, you know that he won't obviously share all of those things for him, but he or she also need to get results. But by and large, the one that become a global village. Sometimes we feel like those that are, I mean, those 
uh, high net worth individuals, okay, are not uh, available anywhere to see them. There are so many places, so many locations that you can deploy, I mean, that you can explore to get your findings and your, uh, I mean, research done. I say, yeah, you can look at Google a lot. If you interact, because so far too, what happens is that it's to the essence of information we have at our disposal that we work with. So, because you don't have that level of that level of information, you don't have access to certain information, then you are unable to get more. There's something I do, and I always encourage when I take classes like this, I like do. There are times you go all out for sales, go out for prospecting. There are times you sit back and do what we call analysis, fight finding, research. If you are into tangible product or market product, I call it, you gather market intelligence. You go all out for market intelligence, even if you are in a, let me say, manufacturing organization where you sell products and, I mean, you carry products in your truck and you go out, there are times or days or period that you don't even carry any products, you are not even going out to sell. You just go out to look at what is happening in this market. And then for, so for us in real estate and uh, uh, property asset management sales, we sit down to do analysis of that industry and try to do who and what sector, what category of people have been buying, what has happened with economic uh, impact in terms of that industry, or generally, because your customer too, of course, they not necessarily have to be in that sector. Now, when you look at that, for instance, taking the pandemic, for example, during the pandemic, it appears that uh, there's no much uh, business activity, economy was, you know, dwindling, everybody was just trying to uh, scamper for, you know, at least survivor, let me be alive, let me come back to business, and that. But you will be surprised that during that period, there are business going, people are still buying products. And some of us will like, you know what? We'll just say that at least now there's no business. So we fold our hand and I said, when everything is okay, we'll come back. But the truth is, some people are still taking advantage because some people are still making money. Now, right now, the impact of pandemic is still there. And it's obvious to us that look, many people are not buying. And let me say this. You know, have you wondered that, that each time you drive on in traffic and you see all those guys that run Etiskata carrying different items, trying to sell, that if they are not actually making any sale, they won't be there again. Have you not thought of that? Because when I look at, sometimes I look at how much is everything this person is carrying. Maybe I should just buy it up and ask him to go. And I said to myself, I will just be making a fun of myself. If I buy it, Thinking that if I buy everything from that guy and he goes home, he will show up the next few minutes, go and carry another set. So it then dawned on me that look, it does mean that if they are not selling at all with all this stress running after vehicles, they won't be here. So have you also pondered and wonder that we have so many real estate companies springing up to the extent that some even showed up on CNN for adverts, the town stormy. Some do a lot of flyer, so many, you know, cocktail just to talk to you about the project. I've, I mean, I have some of them as clients. I've seen some, some, some set leaving the country to UK, just go and do prospecting. Now, do you think if people are not buying, you will still get more? The challenge you have is that you are not closing sales. And so you feel because you are not selling, nobody's buying. But I'm glad to tell you today, the good news is that those that will buy today, that will buy tomorrow, and will buy in years time, in 10 years time, are still very much available. And I'll give us a little insight to that. But first, let's look at this. How do you gather your, your data? Now, let me take a social media platform, for example. We are all familiar with that. Again, I always say this. We use a social media platform for conversation. Not too many of us use it for business purposes. How many of people, I mean, how many people in your social media platform or your social media connection that you have taken time occasionally, like, let me even review and then probably be able to segment and maybe try to, to profile them and look at who is on my network. 
Sometimes the person we are trying to, to contact or network with is right there on the social media and it's even accessible. And I've tested this, and that's why I can say to you, I speak to it. And I'll give you one of the approach I use. If I need to get anybody on social media, I need to get anybody, and I think I need that person for whatever reasons I need that person. I try to do my analysis as first exploring the social media. Find out if, I, if for instance, I don't, I don't even know the person because I may not have seen the person before. I may have a more challenge, I mean, more bigger challenge because I need to be able to put identity to the person. Because otherwise, it will show that if you search my name and you are there, you will see one million names like that in social media. So if you don't know me, the first thing is to find who knows me and can give me a picture of the person I'm even looking for. Now, when I'm able to get that, and you can also get that, on, I mean, to exploring some platform. I mean, if the person, if you're able to, like, if I have an idea of the person working in a certain organization, if you approach the website of that organization, if it's an, it's a high level officer there, possibility that you will see the picture of the profile of the person on the website. If not, if you do Google search, the possibility that it will bring you different names and different pictures. You probably be able to pick the person from there. Now, <laughs> assuming you have the picture already, then you want to get some more information about the person. There are different platforms or different social media platforms that you can explore. One of them that is more corporate and more professional is LinkedIn. Now, on your LinkedIn, you've been there several. You just post things. Or when you are looking for a job, that's the reason why you go there to look for vacancy. But you've forgotten that the job you have right now is to perform better on it. So that the opportunity factor you want to change it. Now, so you then begin to do your profile based on industry, sector, uh, you know, that platform afforded the opportunity to do senior roles, executive roles, junior roles, to search accordingly and profile people. And then when you get there, when you get to their LinkedIn page or profile, you see almost everything about them. Now, you want to connect with them. Most people may not leave their contact details there. But for those that live there, or an average person who live either at Twitter and do their website or something a bit close. But however, suppose you do not get anything about that person there. Then the next one, what I do is I look at who are the people in this connection or network. If I see anybody in their network that, they, that, that appears they work in the same organization, I say that, okay, I have one point of relief. If I see anybody in their sample of that family of friends, I feel another point of relief. Because why? I am doing this profiling because I want to be sure that this person is such a person I need to, to you know, attend to or prospect. So rather than going physically and knocking on the doors and the security man will tell me he's not around, the PA will tell me he's not available, I probably have some level of information. Do you know that if you send a proposal to me, address to me personally, and you're able to put an, maybe one, just one, a sta one statement or a line talking or defining who I am, do you know that I'll be a bit more curious as to, wow, this person definitely has some level of information. And that can be the reason why we can have a conversation. So this platform affords us all, all, all of those opportunities. But it depends on how best we use them and the level of expertise we have and what information we are looking for. But suppose you are unable to even, I mean, you don't have all of the expertise, and you can leverage your people that have the expertise to see how they can assist you to get the result. Because ultimately, what is important to you is the result. Okay, so we have all of those platforms there, and then let's, get, let's go ahead and then we we'll begin to unravel them as we go. Again, I mentioned a benchmark. Now, do some research around your competition and determine the edge you have over them and their edge over you. Are you better, faster, and cheaper? Now, one other thing you need to know as part of the effort in profiling, trying to get the right prospect, okay, and then uh, ensuring you are able to close better and faster is 
benchmarking your competitors. You do not operate in a vacuum. Your product may not be the exact as that of the competitor of competition, but the truth is that there are features that will make your product and that that competitors. Even the out 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 outlook, the, the, the appearance seems to be the same. There will definitely be something that's a bit that will differentiate the two items of product or services. So you may then look at okay, it appears your competitor play more in this sector or with this category of people. Then you probably then need to do your final. Too. If you need to enter that category into that market into that cycle you probably need to study some of the techniques or approaches deployed by your competitor so that you can have information that you can work with or perhaps leverage on to get better because ultimately what you want to do is to displace your competitor you can get a better patronage now let's do this because this is very important and that's why sometimes too, we miss it we operate in a sector that we do not have enough information to work with now i said this for you to be a good salesperson for you to sell well and get results again with ease less effort then you need enough information if you operate in property in the real estate sector how much of information do you have at your disposal to what extent are we be able to develop yourself now let me say this to us now, I once worked in a capital market. Now, up until then, I was working in a, 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 a FMCG. FMCG, obviously, to sales marketing, FMCG, obviously, going to be different when it comes to the sector or a, a capital market. I've been dealing with more of tangible products, dealing with more of direct consumers. All right. Now I'm, I'm moving to financial sector that products are not so tangible and they are investment based. Okay, it doesn't mean that what I've been selling before is what perhaps we we'll call uh, food. Now, if you look at the anarchy of meat that based on Abraham Maslow, you know food, shelter, and what? Somebody tell me the third one. At least just those three first category: food, shelter, and what? I still want to know where we are here. Clothing. Someone is talking. Huh? And clothing. Upload, uploading. Are you getting that? Clothing. Clothes. Clothing. Clothing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so it means that we are here. Okay, you send that to clothing. Now, if I've been selling consumables, so if I could, and then I'm moving from there to investment. Now, shelter will not be seen as investment at this point. Shelter will be seen as where I can lay my head to protect myself. It will sound more as a safe haven, a, a secure environment. It's not going to be seen more as an investment at that point for me. Now, so it is when you have where you believe you are safe, that you can now begin to talk about investment. Because if you are not safe, perhaps you are not comfortable, at this present level, you then not begin to think about investment. Because if you sacrifice your comfort for investment, the possibility is that one day you wake up and consume that investment. So there's no need for us to now understand that our prospect for property, for assets, for luxurious or expensive, okay, uh, property will be one people that already will take care of their food or feeding, take care of their clothing, and then be able to be sure that they are able to provide shelter in terms of safety, safe even for themselves. Then the beginning they not think that I'm not think I'm able to take care of this i cannot look at aspect of investment so <clears throat> that is very important as a session so if that 
that is the case, then they have that clear understanding. So when I'm going to move into the capital market, I knew I'm going to be dealing with a different customers, different set of people. I'm going to be talking to people about investment. Okay. I cannot give what I don't have, meaning that I have to have enough information for me to be able to educate you. I'm not going to come to you just to come and say, buy stocks, buy shares. I have to educate you. I have to give you enough information that almost turning you to like, uh, I mean, someone that can also pass the information across to other people. So making you like myself. So for us to excel and do better on our job in this safe effort, we must be able to have enough information about what and how that industry plays. And that's why I'm going to please share some few thoughts on that. What is a real estate? So real estate is property that consists of land and improvement, which include building features, roads, structure, city system, property rights, the title of ownership of the land, improvement, and natural resources such as mineral, plant, animal, and water. I want to define a real estate. Real estate property sales and marketing require certain unique skills and knowledge to excel. Mark those two words. Unique skill and knowledge to excel. Now, if you are doing this job or you are running this work because you are put in that department, yes, you are doing your job, but you already know that efforts do not count, results matters. Effort did not count, result matters. So everyone needs to get results because that's what counts, that's what matters, and that's what your employer, that's what your superior want to see. And so for you not to just make effort to but get results, then you need to have that unique set skills and that knowledge of the industry, of the uh, business, you need that. Uh, adequate knowledge. So, not until when you possess or acquire some strategic knowledge, information, and skills that will enable you to close more sales with less effort, you may be frustrated and become weary. And that's why I want us to also pay attention to this. Now, because of time, I mean, I've run this course for three, four days, but because it's a compact course, we will give expose our mind and we expect that you can develop yourself for that. That's why I'm just going to be able to not go, go so much with details. But of course, I'm going to share the slide with us. And I have some of my you know, notes in the, in the slide that you can also read to get more insight. So we are saying, what are the types of real estate? Because again, Matthew, you, you are profiling your customers. The interests of your customer, either corporate or individual, will be different. So you need to also know what right product to take to the customer. And that's why you need to have those information and knowledge about the industry. So there are several types of real estate, each with a unique purpose and utility. The main categories are land, residential, and industrial. Okay, if you come to a company and selling residential to them, their power is right now may be like industrial commercial. Now, if you mean, it may be that I build a north residential apartment and I want to go commercial. So you need to know what exact need do I have and then you look at your buffet of services or products and know which one to serve me because I mean, if you don't know, are you to know?
saying that the indices of an approved and more resolved as a consultant. You know what? To be Sorry, I don't know why the network is rotating now, but I guess the weather. But I've tried to change my network now to So I hope this will be better. Apologies, please. I will see here. All right, so I was talking about. Um, About the, the, the things you need to, you know, to how you need to also show up before your, you know, your your, your customers, or your your clients, you need to to appear and be seen as a consultant. And how do I mean uh, a consultant? A consultant is seen as an expert, is seen as a know it all, you know, someone that also experienced, someone that's, uh, you know been dealing in that services or product or what what have you for a very long time and so because people see you that way they respect you they respect you and they essentially submit to you because they will see you as a superior but when you appear <coughs> before your client and uh, you, rather than they asking you a question you are the one asking them question trying to know more then there's a problem but let me say this to you and mark this and note this very well. Do also not appear before your customers or prospects assuming or with the assumption they don't, that they don't know anything about your service or your product or the industry. And average customers know so much that you'll be surprised that when you begin to engage them and they engage you, they will be telling you what they know. So don't assume when you are faced with a customer or prospect, prospective customer that they don't know anything. But more importantly, ensure that you, are, you have enough information at your disposal. And if you have to go close sales, and you're not sure to the extent of your knowledge about that business or industry, get somebody to work with you that knows so much about the industry. I will sit together. Okay, so, and I'm going to emphasize on this because we are talking about property and real estate, which is investment. And one of the things that drives that is the document. They are the titles, what we call title. Suffice to say at this point that too, that the number of, uh, did I say jargons, relatively or re that's related to that industry that at your disposal also we always make you to appear as all sufficient. So when we say titles, then I'm going to define some document, what, how they are referred to. It's very important that you guide yourself with some of those informations and enough as much. 
that there are various land documents in Nigeria, essentially, that are affecting the of land ownership. Legal interest in the property. A prospective buyer of land must be acquainted with the appropriate land document relevant to the purchase of its property to be purchased. Now, again, let me say this. When we talk about your competitions, you know, sometimes you have land or property in the location and your competitor have the property in the same location. And what will be the differentiating factor will be the document or the title that you have available. So you have C of O. Your competitor have uh, maybe a, a deed of assignment or just have a survey or what have you. Obviously, you know, you have an edge, but this is your sub competitor selling more than you because of their sales approach and because of how they are able to do their thorough analysis of who their targeted marketers, uh, market are, who their customers are, but you have not done enough. So one of the things that will help you and give you better results will be to what extent your information, the, the, the viability of your documentation, the, the, the authenticity of the titles you have for those uh, property or land. So the documents are mandatory or relevant to say single party and appropriate document for proposal, I mean for proposed uh, property transaction will be determined by the nature or circumstance of the property. Let's go a little bit into that and see, show us some of the documents, right, that will enable or assist or make us get to say. So document attached to sales of land. We have land, land uh, purchase receipt, we have contract of sales of land, we have survey plan, we have deed of assignment, we have assets. Now, like I said earlier, I won't be able to be going through this, but these are things that are very essential and then you can learn from it. We have certificate of occupancy, which is called C or 4, all right? We have deed of mortgage, we have deed of gift, we have grant of probate, we have a letter of administration, of course, yes, if you're going to sell in a property of, of a disease, okay, you always, it always come, I mean, you work on the, the probate and a letter of administration. Okay, so these are essentials. Now, because when you are talking to your prospective customer and you give them the right information, I mark you, I said earlier, don't assume they don't know. Because the possibility is that they have also sat that property out the moment they saw it was for sale or somebody told them about it or they have been monitoring that environment because they have interest in the state of property in that environment, they probably have done their job. So by the time they are engaging you and you're not trying to paint blue black before them, they already know that they can't deal with you. Even though they need that property, they will find a way around it. That's a, some occasions that they will say, can I meet with your manager? Can I meet with your MD? Can I meet with your superior? And then you feel like I'm the one that's been talking to you all day. Why at this point? Because you have not been able to convince them with enough information. So they believe that maybe if they talk to the most senior person in the organization, they probably will get the fact out or get the truth. Because you have been trying to manage or micromanage information. So it's essential for us, first and foremost, to know. Most of the companies you see advertising their proper, uh, property, they have not even concluded with their CFO. Some of them may even be under government acquisition. That's another thing you need to know. What is government acquisition? All right, some of those things you need to know because in your prospecting, you will need some, because that will be a likely question. All right, and I've seen a situation sometimes that we, we, I mean, I was involved in the negotiation and talking to the seller of that property, and we have what are the title? He said uh, uh, the title, the, the document they have been living there before. The house, the, the fact that somebody is, is an existing property does not mean it, it has all the titles, you know. And you know that sometimes government will just come up and say they are taking over this location, and before you know it, the residents, the people that or the occupier of that land, do not have any document. And it has happened before and it always happened. So for us to excel and do more sales, close more deals, we need to have the information about all of these documents, like I said, I'm going to share with us. Now, let me get to the this part, which are also very interesting in our prospecting and profiling of our customer. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm gradually move completely from you profiling now to prospecting. And these are things that will help you to close sales and get better results. Okay, so who is your ideal customer? Now, if you have share five critical fundamentals in targeting your ideal customers, and I'll add extra to it, actually. So we have a product knowledge. I've talked about product knowledge a bit, but I'm just going to do a little more about it. It's the skill and ability to fully understand and able to effectively communicate with the prospective customer 
about the product, its features, benefits, uses, support, needs, and everything in totality. Now, I go to a, a bit, uh, uh, you know, beyond the product, and I talk about, you also need to understand about the terrain. Depend on the service and product, you need to understand about the technicality, be able to speak to the technicality of the product, be able to speak to the functionality of the product, be able to speak to <coughs> durability of the product. I mean, you talk about the product and they feel like, wow, you must have used so many of these products. Or perhaps you won't like this. So there's something that we must know. Do not sell a product that you have not been exposed to the reality or the physicality or the technicality. When we talk about property, for instance, real estate property, ensure that you have visited site or location. If it's a built house, a funny, full furnished house, ensure you take a tour of that property. You can sit in your office and your boss throw it at your on your lap and say, come on, let's sell this property. And then you start broadcasting saying it. You will be limited with information and your level of confidence will be reduced. You know why? Because you have not even seen what you are selling. Yes, you trust your leadership. You believe in your boss. You believe in your organization that they will not do anything in Nimica. But the truth is that when you come to conversation, the guy may, I mean, you'll be surprised. The, the prospect may ask you, what type of dog are you using? And then you say, oh, it should be, uh, you know, I'm calm. We always sell the best product. You know, we always use the best quality product. And he asked what brand of the dog. I said, you know, I can assure you that whatever brand it is, it's good. He said, no, 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 don't say whatever brand. I want to know. And this is you. You don't have about the features of the product you are selling. You're selling based on information given to you. We have a five unit uh, house, I mean, room uh, located in Banana Island. Well furnished, uh, what do you call it now? Full service apartment. And then you are selling that. You, but you don't know what are the features. Oh, let's assume. You don't have to take the customer. You are lucky to be able to take the customer to the location for, for, for seeing or tour. And then begin to ask you some questions about some of the things. Uh, this ceramics, what, what is used? When was it erected? This uh, bat, what kind of bat is this? Where, what, what, you, know, you don't have all those information. So that's why we talk about you must have product knowledge and it makes your job easier because you'll be speaking from the angle of knowledge and adequate information. And then by the time you're able to displace all of those, your customers or your prospects will be more convinced that, look, you are on top of this game. Otherwise, the question will be, thank you. I would like to speak with your superior. I would like to speak with your boss. I would like to speak with your MD because they are not too sure of what you have said. So they want to add that certain. Do you know what that means? the cost of the transaction because the person is going to have, have worked with you and they, you have deployed time, resources, transport, effort, all of that. By the time you're going to engage your MD, you're going to be on that, another line of expenses because you want to close the sales. I hope somebody is getting in here. Now, prospecting. I've said this a bit, but I just emphasize. In prospecting too, we talk, I mean, this actually, I'm trying to put this at the, at, at, uh, by tagging your geographic and demographic. Okay, the geography talks about where the consumer lives, reside, and the demography talks about the study of behavior characteristics of them. Okay, so you need to also part of your profile really, but in natural, in natural sense, in trying to make your sales and do your prospecting, you need to have the information about this. Okay, which we have talked about earlier in another profiling, but again for emphasis, you need to know who you are dealing with. Okay, you should understand that your customer would like to know as much as possible. And then you also don't want to waste your time. So your, your, your prospecting effort must be well-targeted, tailor-made, customized, purposeful, so that you don't just go and scout all around. And at the end of the day, you're unable to work to convert or close sales. That can be very, very frustrating, right? There are some, excuse me,
Tag of graphics are values, opinion, lifestyle. Some of the, uh, you know, you need to speak to, the, to it. Then we have the lifestyle, of course, yes, very important. Now, attitude towards their health, personality trait, and other few things like that, that you need to also, you know, have basic knowledge or information. Information about now with a your fees. Let me be a, a bit uh, emphasize this month. Sorry, sorry about that. Okay, now this speaks to the, the promotional media platform that you are exploring to showcase your product. Now, if you are selling a product worth uh, billions of naira, and then you are working on the street of Lagos to, to, to do, make large sales, you probably may do more work and uh, be more and put in more efforts. If at all you're able to even sell it, you may be frustrated. But there are platforms that are avenues that even a prospective buyer will exploit that they can find some of those, uh, you know, property because they know what it is about. The eye net what individual you trying to, you know, to get across to 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 patronize you. There are uh, levels, all right, that they will expect, all right, that they can work with. Okay, so the word of mouth, the your website. The social media and those, okay, and then your elevator pitch are very essential. Now, some of the elevator pitch, some of the organization, some of the uh, property organization or com companies use celebrities to drive the pitch. They use them to also drive the sales. Okay, so how do you package and what platform do you exploit to promote, all right, your, your products or your property? I, I know some 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 uh, school of thought will say that now we don't have to be in the, in the media to make our sales. We don't have to be in media shouting to get the result or to get whatever. All right, but the truth is, you you should know that uh, your search, your prospects are everywhere, and the more you can do with your information, I mean visibility, uh, you know, exp 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 exposition of your product and services. And then how you package it. I mean, sometimes you see some uh, brochure with it, with it defining the property, and then you will like, wow, even from the brochure, you begin to fall in love with the property or asset, all right? And then you will see some probably selling property ads or using some, some media platform. And you're like, I can't, if I buy from me, obviously, I'm probably going to be, uh, I mean, uh, relating with the 419 person. So these are very important that you must, uh, you know, be able to define, or, you know, in, in getting your, your, your getting your result and getting your prospecting and sales done. Right? I've just been alerted that uh, we are now at ten thirty. Okay, so we we take like a fifteen minute break, and we can come back by ten forty five. Uh, it's essential we do we take that break for medical break for breakfast or whatever you want to do. You could, and then you walk around, it's held medical break, so you need to take it, change your position. Um, it's very important for factual training. So uh, I will pull down the slide, and then we'll come back by uh, 10, 45. It's even less than 15 minutes already. But. So I hope we are okay with that. If, if not, let me know if you have a challenge with that. Please. Are we still together?
Yes, please. Okay, so we can go for our short break, 15 minutes short break. Get, grab your cup of coffee, uh, stretch your leg, stretch your back, take your hands away from the system, uh, and then you can observe COVID protocol. Wash your hand and all of that. Thank you. We'll be back in 1045. Okay, thank you, sir. 1045.
All right, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. I think there are a few people that have not joined, but welcome back, sir. Please, can we hear some affirmations from the house? Are we all here? Hello, yeah, let's unmute ourselves. Or drop. Trouble in chat, but let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, yeah, welcome back. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Welcome. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's get going. <coughs> Others will join us. So we stopped there earlier, and then we'll just continue here. I'll just... emphasize a few things there, especially on our social media usage, in part, as part of uh, making sales and then, uh, uh, perhaps, Using it also to profile our customers. But of importance, I want to mention our WhatsApp uh, platform. WhatsApp, as it were, is not just for conversation in Loom right now. And I'll take a clue for myself. If I post anything on my status in WhatsApp, I usually get no less than about 300, 350 views. And sometimes I get to ask myself, it means that. If people are seeing what I post, it means that if I put any um, business or what have you, possibly that people will see, and then they can ask questions. Why I also use my status, of course, if I want to do any communication or uh, you say crush on yourself, uh, it's not a bad idea. Or express your feeling, because that's what most of what you use it for. But I'm just letting you know that, look, it's also an avenue you can showcase what it is that you have. That's one. Secondly, you probably belong to so many groups. Whether you are active there or you're not active there, but there are women being there also there. And if there's no woman being there, maybe one or two of them. But the truth is that for an average group, you belong to the woman being there. And you also know that not everybody also either chat or respond all of the time. But you can you can do your uh, findings or you can one more. You should be able to express or promote your product. Number two, you should be able to do your a bit of analysis as to who and who are here. All right, that could be part of the people you could begin to prospect. All right, so you can leverage on that too as well. Same way that we talked about LinkedIn, and then your Facebook, of course, yes, and then your Twitter, and when and uh, if uh, Twitter will stop back in, in Nigeria, fully, maybe not a lot, of, a lot of people are using it. You know, scripting or something, and then you also have an Instagram. Okay, so there are also avenue to promote your product. But one thing you must be careful about that uh, you you need to also be able to do it professionally, so so that one it doesn't appear you are intruding to people's space. Also, it doesn't appear like you uh, it become it become one of the junks, right? Because you also know even if you send to everybody, the possibility that not everybody will open it. But if it's you are able to do it a bit more professionally and well uh, managed. You probably be able to get some conversation and inquiries and that, that can lead to, to your sales. So let's move on. Just want to raise, raise that before I continue. <laughs> so your, your presentation and packaging. I'm, I'm trying to express that here. Now, sometimes we get that opportunity for pitching or for presentation. And then we just want to go there casually and just say it casually. Now, I think we need to be more conscious right now for every opportunity you have to make presentation about the product, about the property, about the asset, about what you have to sell. If not, if possible, do about two, three, four, five slides, right? Because your prospect may not have that enough time. 
But when you are invited and they are invited you specifically to yell about these, then the possibility is that you can then be able to uh, either prepare or package very well so that you could be able to um, make a, a, a quality presentation. Okay, so that also is, is important and you need to uh, note, note that. But however, in your presentation, is also an avenue that you can use or leverage to make your sales. And so every detail that I require from the beginning of talking about the concept, the creativity, the, the features, the benefit, to the point of talking about the pricing and call for action, it should be engaging, should be very clear and very detailed. Within the short time you have, you should be able to express all of that and get them. Now, for instance, let's see what I have here on this image. You see, it has it from this from the lowest uh, image that I've sent uh, the house, a house, and some phone, all right, to the point you have the 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 the, the tallest one, and you have you know coin underneath. What this respects is that as you make your presentation, you get interest, build up. And that interest is also perhaps accompanied by some conviction in terms of the financial commitment. <laughs> so as you're able to cultivate, captivate, uh, win them over, then you start having a build up. So that is what I'm saying. When it comes to your presentation and it also comes to your packaging. Now, this is what you might also necessary for you to, to have in mind. <laughs> and I'll use an example again. I once have a... Uh, I, this happened to me when I was in capital market and also when I was making, doing some real estate sales. And we appeared to that, to demand, like we want to work on something for them, right? And that cost for um, them, for them to, to patronize some millions of millions of dollars, about 500 million dollars worth of a, a property. And the guy look at uh, where are we from, the company we are from, and I look at how uh, we have presented ourselves. I'm talking about our physical appearance now. <laughs> I'm looking at what kind of car we came with. I mean, if your company is having to be selling a property of this, the you, the star representative, should be able to, uh, you know, uh, look very reasonably better or appearance and all that. So, you can understand how, how that works. So that also has to do with your packaging. How yes, you don't have to be to be to be deceptive because you're trying to sell product and then be deceptive. But let it be known that if you are selling something of value of quality of, of high price, your organization, your representation, your presentation should be able to match. Because it should be it should be, I mean, it should be tough to balance where you are making discussion on a high value property of about a billion, 500 million, and then we look at the people that have represent sort of mention, look at that and look on kept or look on, on well prepared or physically upright, or even your car is such that you have to push when you are going back. You know, those some of those challenges. But those things are minute, but it's very important. Okay, maybe I should balance this way. Much as you have profiled your customers or your prospective customer, so also they will also what measure you when you appear or when you come in contact. So it's both end. They will also size you up, all right? They will evaluate you, evaluate your company. The truth is that the moment you take a leave, your leave, even when you have appeared very nice, they probably do need to do what you call due diligence on your company. And I must say to you, sincerely speaking, that are organizations that are coming right now that you know their name. And they are making, I mean, they are selling a very high, uh, luxurious or exclusive property. And they are into a lot of mess. And that's honest truth. Because the people have bought into them before they realize that there are a lot of trouble. One, they've not even been able to take possession of the property. And they have become legal issues. All right? But so, but the truth is, your, you profile your customer, your customer do due diligence on you. Or your corporate organization, even as an individual, they do it right to be sure that this is not a 419 kind of scheme. 
Right? So we need to understand that our presentation and packaging, you know, is also make a lot of, I mean, matters most in this whole day process of our sales. <coughs> Pricing and payment. Now, this is one of the challenge where the high level of objection and rejection happens, and then negotiation. Now, my emphasis here, one will be, you need to up your game in negotiation. Now, I'm not going to dwell much on negotiation because of time, but the truth is that you need to up your, your game when it comes to negotiation. Because when you prospect and you are able to convince to some extent, the next level will be negotiation. Now, the possibility is that the client is interested. And then will tell you, okay, if you put 500 million, now can we pay 400 million? And then negotiation starts. Now, let me say to you, negotiation is not a form of back and forth. Neither is it a point to say uh, you are not the kind of customer we, we thought or we are profile. It's a form times, it comes from the point of, uh, you know, uh, of, uh, from angle, from the point of, I mean, from the customer. It comes from the angle of seeking more assurance seeking more convictions and trying to get more clarity. Okay, so because when they tell you that, look, we can pay 500, we want to pay 400, and you're like, oh, if you cannot pay 500, then you can walk away. That's what, that's, I mean, that says a certain signal. All right, so it's a point of negotiation. And one of the things that will be very important at that point is that you continue to emphasize the reason why it goes for that price, the ad competitive advantage you have over similar services or property anywhere else. We talk about the location, talk about the, uh, I mean, the, the convenience, the features, the benefits generally. Okay, so you come back to that price and say, look, yes, I understand that uh, you want to pay 400, but the reality is I'd like to further explain some things to you. You know, this property, the makeup of this property, what is involved in the construction of the property? What are the things that you know? Why it's a bit different from what you have seen before? Why I think it's best for you to go for? You continue to send that commission, clarity, and then what persuasion. Now it's a skill that on its own we can take for a whole day, but you need to just develop yourself to get that. And then mark you. One other thing that happens is that what we call non so there will be a lot of that you can also be able to interpret that will work for you. But you know if there's interest, the only a fair deal, or you will know that if it's part of time wasting effort. So you need to be able to work on that. However, <laughs> when it comes to pricing, to we'll tell them to give different options. You see, I understand you have formed now, but I could probably talk to my manager. Uh, you know, uh, maybe instrumental payment for you, or we can work on, if you can pay 500 at once, I could probably talk to my manager to give you some, some discount. That discount will come in, in, in terms of after say service. That naturally when we pay, you know, some documentation you are supposed to pay. But I can talk to my manager that, instead of you pay 100% of that documentation, you can pay 50%. So you begin to give some buffer, some or leverage, any things that could be able to address interest interest to that property, I mean to that person. That they don't worry, the, the legal fee will probably be on us. Oh, the documentation of uh, the deed of transfer, all those one could be on us. So you, you begin to put those negotiation, those discounting, those possibility of, okay, pay on 500, 400 now, and then I can work a scheme for you that you pay the 100 million balance installment, but you pay with the minimum interest rate of 2.5. So you should be able to give some you know, lead way that will make the person feel like, oh, this company is reasonable. Oh, this service is reasonable. Oh, let's see what we can do. Oh, we could even write to your bank, you know, to find, you know, too many things can come in between that pricing and payment. And where your price is like, it's a fixed one, one of the things you can also do is to, after perhaps you are going to discussion, but let me say this too. Suppose you take the client to the, to the site, and as I decide, the price is taken up on the issue of pricing and payment method. Now, this can be differentiated, pricing and payment method. If it's at the site, 
I will encourage, if you have an office at the site, get the customer comfortable. If you do not have an office at the site, try to encourage visitation to your office. It helps and it makes the client a bit comfortable, relaxed, in a better atmosphere and not under any uh, pressure and also can be able to be, you know, have a good and quality discussion. So all of this will happen, you know, at some point and it's important you also factor in that into your process and be able to close. Now, where you are unable to close, try to have leading question. Leading question in the sense that if you are not going to buy, what would be the reason why you are not buying? I said, well, I've done my due diligence and I realized that some papers are not complete and you don't have it. Okay? Now, what does this do? It helps you, if that's the truth, it helps you to know how to manage that process. And then it helps you to be able to clarify some of the areas that probably that see doubt, that are seen, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, not unclear, that are still issues that are surrounding it, you be able to know. Okay, yeah, the challenge is uh, our budget for this is 400 and uh, we probably won't go on to raise it. So you know, you know exact reason why you are having that, I mean, why they are not, why, why you're not closing. Now, if it appears that they feel like, okay, um, yes, uh, we probably feel interested, but we don't have enough information. Then you now know what to do. Now, if it appears that they are still not so sure because of, because of uh, some shortfall in information, do not first try to, to play any Akadakabra. Let me put that, me, let me put that way. At that point, I probably will encourage that. If you have a partner, or you have uh, you, your superior, you may then bring, it, bring them on board. You know why? Because there's no amount of information you will say again that perhaps, not because you have not said it well, sometimes, sometimes too maybe you have also not make it, you have not done it well. But what happened is that when they begin to hear same thing from one, two, three, or you have a conference meeting, there a bit of uh, confidence that, okay, now it, it's looking like uh, that's a true position. Now, this does not, sometimes it does not make you a bad presenter or a salesperson. Some other time it makes you one. But what I would say is that, which uh, you must also take with a lot of uh, sincerity with your service, you go back and review your process and speak to yourself. Yeah, I think you groove here. And I will say, I will set an example. This is even about stock. Now, I'm talking about stock because also in investment and properties and investment, I just want to do, put this together. But they, they, of course, they are, they are different to, to a great extent, but they both yield interest. Of course, property, property is more of where you need more interest and more uh, comforting than uh, stock. But I met, uh, through my profiling, I met uh, a very a retired uh, cap captain, yes, that has airplane that flies both in Nigeria and US locally. So he stays somewhere in Ikoi. I mean, very well-made man. All he does is read newspaper, watch TV, eat his food, go back to his room. So I went there that day and we were discussing on shares. I'm talking about, about 250 million dollar uh, business transaction. He asked me so many questions up to the point of asking about the board of the company. Now, I was able to give out all of those information, make all of those convictions, and all of that. And then, you know, I asked the last question as I was going to leave, and I said, okay, at this point, that question, I don't want to commit my company. So I said, I will speak with my MD, and probably our next visit, my MD will come with me. And then that was where we leave it. Now, if you ask me what happened, I regretted invo involving my MD. <laughs> Now, this happens. This buyer has the money. I mean, from all the profiling, qualified, has the money, is interested. My, and because he's a top level person, and you know, my handy too is a big, a big person, a big guy, is have all the money. So Ego came into it. Okay. We are going to visit 
And then there were conversation. I might end if you, ah, what's all about this? Because you're going to transact a business of 250 million and we also, uh, all that. and then I think something happened, something happened, and I lost business. And I said to myself, never will I invite any of my superior to come and close my sales for me. I'll close it myself. Now, not because I cannot answer the question, but I just felt, let me also introduce a bit of dynamics and make it more interesting. And I lost the business. And so I've learned from that, that accept and accept is very important and essential that you have to involve either your superior or your MD. Now, the truth is this, the possibility that they don't have the patience you have, the possibility is that, of course, they, have, they may like not have anything to lose because it's not their target. It is my target. Okay? So you have to be very sure that you need to invite or introduce this person to your client. I lost the business. That was the truth. And to date, I always regret it. But it was a lesson for me. And that's why I'm sharing it now. So since, ever since then, I don't even, I close my deals. Anyhow, I'm going to close, I'll close it without involvement. I just come and I tell you, I've, I've sold it. So what that means is that inviting the third party in the process, you must be very sure it is necessary. And how do I mean? Sometimes we try to close sales and bring the third party. And when it comes to property and asset sales, you bring the third party, it could be the lawyer, it could be the accountant, it could be the surveyor. And if you don't manage them, they might likely cause trouble, trouble for you. Number one, if you get to that point, that position or situation, educate them very well. Now, if you ask me, it may be tough to have educated my MD or tell my MD not to say some things. But of course, I felt at this level, is my MD, I have nothing to lose. But of course, ego's setting. I'm a big man, you're a big man, and I mean, I don't think I have to be so stupid because I'm going to say something to you. Which I feel a, a little more clarification, a little more patience, a little more uh, persuasion probably would have got the man on board. I hope you are somebody scaring me. So I, I'm saying this because it does happen. And it will always happen if it's not properly and, and carefully managed or handled. All right? Okay, so let's go on. Now, look at this. I, I, I really advise this, you would have to sit down and look at it critically. But I said the idea behind this user profile, jot down qualities, indicate leads aren't a fit, along with those that could convert if they are nurtured correctly. This allows you to prioritize which leads to convert. Okay, so it's just a matrix that you can work with to look at, look at the need, the time, success, budget, winners, right? Against no fit, workable fit, complete fit. Now, let me say this to you. Each time you prospect or you talk to people and they show, or you, you canvas for, uh, for the sales of your property, don't write them off. You can plot them in this, in this matrix. You can pull them. The ones that are complete no fit, now, no fit perhaps will be based on that product. You have five room terrace property. You have one room uh, luxurious uh, apartment. They, and you are proposing to that person five room, uh, five room uh, terrace, whatever. And you find that the person will be fit for luxurious. So you can introduce other products. Don't write off. Plot the grab and put them that workability fit probably based on a, a, a different product, a different packaging, a different item, you can do that. That is workable, that is possible. So you go, go through this and then you can work with that with all your clients that you have, you have presently and then rate them and then score them, right? That's what I'm trying to do here. So let's quickly run now and we should be able to tidy up in the next 30 minutes so that we can engage ourselves in question and answer for, okay, I'll try to close in 20 minutes and then we'll do that question and answer for 30 minutes and we'll call it a day. So, how to perform a client need analysis. Remember again, I said to us earlier, customer is the king and it's understandable to me. Now, why this discussion? Sometimes what you have on your plate or in your buffet or product or service may not be what the customer or the client needs. So you don't write them off. You can then be able to look at, okay, let me get your need. Do your need, their needs analysis, right? And when you do their need analysis, and then look at if in the nearest future, 
you can be able to get it. Or you can be able to work your process towards getting it. That's what we're trying to talk about here. That's why I said that for you to excel in sales or marketing, what have you, you must plot your graph from the customer back to your operation. You don't plot your graph from your operation to the customers. So this is what the need, client needs analysis CN, is, is we're talking about here. All right. So and now to perform client analysis, no matter this is a process of engaging customer with the purpose of understanding their requirement of product and service. So what you have now, you have your union key to all the doors. And the government said, I want this key that I've seen somewhere, the key they use for synagogue in the days of Jesus Christ is what I want. So you now understand that you have a demand, perhaps a customized or specified demand, and then you can begin to start count through your, 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 what your portfolio to see whether you have that already. If you don't have it, you can pull it like, okay, let's put it into the process. Now, for instance, I know that Amcon do not build. You sell what you have, right? But it's also possible, I'm not sure, maybe possible that you could look at, okay, what is what we have? It don't fit the demand of this client. And then there's an agreement that adjustment can be worked on because the client, of course, will have made some commitment and said, can you do this for me? And then they can do it. Or you can say, okay, we, we sell it, you can then do your amendment and we can have some understanding. Or perhaps you have uh, what your partners that you work with and that can do that for you. So if the customer is a worthy customer based on your profiling, then you can, uh, but you don't have the readily service or product they need, then you can be able to offer it by going extra mile and that can get some solution and get some good patronage and even get some good reputation from that client, and you'll be sure that a referrer might be there for you. So common types of customer need, of course, functionality, price, convenience, efficiency, reliability, control, transparency, information, and options, okay, are some of the things that define that. So we have a business need analysis to increase efficiency, right? Use user need analysis to understand the need of the end users. Pain point to discover the most challenging aspects of the customer, Goals and objective also says discovering the needs of the cost business or user by giving attention to the goals and objectives of the organization about the solution being proposed. Okay, so this again, you must know that because it's going from beginning to the end, there's possibility that you'll be involved in the negotiation process. That will be offer, counter offer, negotiation, and what have you. Okay, so that will usually happen, and that, that is very important that you know that. But do not uh, go against the policy or objective of organization because you want to get your sales. However, if it's such that it can be worked on based on the fact that your management can look or take care with it, then you can get that done. Okay, so we have used cases, apply similar user perspective on similar challenges to offer solution, right? This just exposes us to some of the things that are common in the field of sales when we are confronted with sales process. So some of the basic tools, again, that we can use to do this uh, customer needs analysis is survey, right? Question, ask question, engage them, interaction. Okay, you can do all of that to ensure you have uh, enough information and customer feedback. Even if you make sales, I think it's important that you have customer feedback so that you know what has worked. And the principle is that find what works and stay or work with it find what works and work with it. So if it doesn't work, there's no point scratching your head, crazy, getting crazy, running yourself up, work with it. But we say this again that, look, if it's not, if you're not getting the required results, so it will be stupidity and insane to want to deploy the same process to expect different results. You won't. So that is why you must consistently improve and engage yourself Right, challenge yourself to get a better result. Okay. All right. So, um, oh, sorry. Okay. So uh, that's that. That's right. <laughs> How to create potential solution to client need? How to create potential? Need? I mentioned a few, but let me just quickly rush through this. Number one, you look at you use feedback form, like I said, from CNA to provide solution because you will be addressing the exact need of the customer 
Offer consistent messaging across all con company communication channels. It's also very important. Ensure that your customer has the accurate information about the product and service, about the property, about the asset. Now, when I talk about the third party, third party comes in different form, like I mentioned earlier, but maybe we have internal third party and external third party. If you also walk through external third party, educate your external third party. Okay? And to ensure. Uh, maybe I should say this. Uh, I'm involved in some of the process of helping Amcon to also dispose of property. So if that information I'm not privy to, I'll probably not be able to give enough information to some of the people that I'm engaging that want to buy. So, and I'm a top party because I'm not in your system. Okay, so it's important you educate all the channels so that there could be enough information. Incorporate, incorporate feedback loop across processes, like we said. At every point, all right, every obstacles or every feedback is essential that is properly tailored or processed so that the problem can be, can be solved, okay? Not your customer relationship, uh, not your customer relationship are providing impeccable customer services. Very Let me say this. I once run into, I mean, I don't have, I don't have an experience that the price I was giving to was the price I was wanting to sell. And until the customer or the prospect, prospect told me that, look, uh, I had the price has gone down. And I, I felt totally embarrassed myself that, look, what kind of sales am I doing that I don't have enough information? You can see what happened. When the customer is one telling me and educating me that, look, the price has actually gone down that year, it goes from another source. Okay, so it's important that we ensure that we have that. Then nurturing relationship is also very key. Now, this is it. If you have done your profiling, like I said earlier, and the customer is not buying right now, do not write off, okay? Have your matrix where you plug them there for the future date because the possibility is that they may, you may eventually have something that will be of interest. So what that means is that you keep relationship. Don't get relationship toxic. Make it open. Once in a while, you are a business development person, you are a marketing, you are a sales person, send out message, good, good message to person. Oh, I just said I should check on you. If that alone, keep, make them feel like you have them in mind and they also have you in mind. And that can work some things. Okay, through telephone call, online engagement, in person, and what have you, you visit to them, so that can build up business, good business relationship. I'm making sales call sales. Okay, I'm just going to rush through this because, uh, like I said earlier, we've had a lot of this. But sales focus, sales funnel, and sales reports. These are very important. Now, especially the last one, the sales report. The fact that you have not made sales does not mean you should not have your report tidy up. What two things happen, it helps you to establish to your superior that there are effort. When your superior see the possibility that your superior may now begin to know that, look, I can intervene here, I can assist you. And it also help you to also know to what extent you have gone with certain client, certain prospect, and then know where to, and what to take it up from the next uh, line. Okay, so I also said that you can set and accomplish your sales goals if you are able to work on this, measure your sales activities, Monitor your pipeline, improve your rates, your closing rates, reduce the length of your sales process, increase your average sales, align with people and who can bring you leads. Now, let me emphasize this. You may also need to look at your own circle. I'm talking about high net worth individual now. Where do you get them? Where do they reside? What do they do? That's what you need to do. There's somebody I was going to close a sales with on property. And I know he's a member of golf club. And I'm not a member of golf club. And I spoke to one of my person that I know is a member of golf club. Look, I probably will follow him to next golf course game or training or, I, you know, hang out so that I can thank you. And that's one of the things. So there are places that this high network individual come back. And let me say this to, this to you, that when you target them at that angle, either mocks, church, clubhouse, they are not... Uh, seem to be shaded. Even if they have their aids or security details around, they are a bit more relaxed. All right? So you could get opportunity to engage and conversation, have a conversation with them at that point. You will find it extremely tough to close sales with high net worth individual at your office hour, except that is the business that they are doing in that department or that they are set out to do or that person set out to do. But if it's about individuals, you need to know where they belong and where their guard will be less or be losing. You need to identify that. So do not keep on stressing yourself. Try to, because, um, okay, let me mention it. 
when you try to get access to them, perhaps during the work hour, you will meet so many what we call gatekeepers, obstacles. So you have to be able to be smart enough to break that of the security guy. When you break that of the security guy, you will meet the front desk. You should be able to be smart enough to break that of the front desk. But when you beat the front desk, you will meet, if you are lucky, like in your office in Napa, where you have security on every floor, <laughs> they may, it may be that security guy that we will send you back if you are unable to get your good clearance. However, if you pass through all those, you will meet the PA. When you see the PA, it's another obstacle for you to cross. You, in fact, when you feel with the PA, the PA may likely call the aid, so it should take you there. If you are unable to manage the aid too, so you may have about six obstacles, all right, because you want to get access to this person and be able to make your sales. In fact, for you to get to other place, you must have done some strong network somewhere that has, that's opening that door for you. But I tell you, when you meet them at some of these areas that I mentioned earlier, it probably will be a, 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 just a, a cruise home because they, they lose their car. And because they feel like for you to even enter the club, you probably will have either member or come with somebody that also a member. So both club, so, and what most organizations do really is that they have some level of staff that are registered with some of these organizations. That's their business. I have seen a, uh, someone who travel as far as going to Umrah because we want to close the sales. I know that Governor Erufai will be at Umrah that year and then he took his hotel. He has, he has, he has done his profiling. That's I never profiling that I mentioned earlier. Knowing that this guy will be at Umra and he has tried to do as much as, as much as finding his hotel room, so he booked his own hotel almost on or close to him. And when they're going to do prayer, just said to him, I mean, it's, I mean, if you see anybody beside you at that level, you feel like the big guy too now. So that's respect. So that's what we are talking about: profiling, selling to the high net when we do that. A lot of things you do, organizations do it. They will pay the price for their for their staff because they feel that they need to close this stage. It may be it may be coming expensive, but the fact is that if they close the sales or if they be able to get what they need, they get good results, and that's what we are talking. So, there are projects you are selling, there are uh, products you are selling that will require you to invest that much. Majority of people that are member of clubs, some of these uh, you know uh, big clubs, like I said, boat club, golf club, you know uh, island club, Lagos Country Club, some of them are even sponsored by their company. To the membership because that is where the people that they want are, are that's where you can do the networking so for the purpose of networking they do that okay all right so like i said i'm going to stop i have just seven minutes okay so now strategy for setting your smart goals it's also important for you to set smart goals and in setting your smart goal you'll be able to be assured that you are doing it right in the right way so that you can get better results. So a single sales person, goals and target projection are always the front, uh, forefront of your mind. So I say to people, one of the fastest way to rise, to rise, to get promotion, okay, in any organization, if you are in marketing or sales department, because the measurement of your performance is very simple. You know what it is? You are expected to achieve 500 million. How much have you achieved? That's the first one. Before they come back to a good character, a good behavior, Nina, am I, am I saying the way HR has seen it? The first one is KPI. KPI is delivered 500 million. Oh, so Muhammad, you have delivered 500 million. Okay, they now look at other things. But if Muhammad has not delivered 500 million, they will still look at other things. But of course, yes, there will be flag, flagging of, you know, below performance, below performance. So for horses sales, you should without even setting one for you, set one for yourself. And that's why you say you have to set smart sales goals. This, I mean, what are the things that for price of that, I said specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So you have to measure, be able to work according to this to make sure that you have a smart sales goal for yourself as a, as a person, for your department, for your session, for your directorate, and you can be able to show. So, Again, for the emphasis that the type of sales goals that you can sell, right? They are here. Revenue, the amount of revenue you want to earn, margin, your over profit minus your expenses, efficiency, the ratio of revenue to cost, the turn rate, the rate at which you produce cancellation and increase renewal, right? At least you are able to reduce the, what do you call it now? 
uh, you know, loss of customers, right, or uh, uh, attritions, you know, in your business, that's of customer base and all of that. Customer satisfaction, your pleasantness, this is another skill that everybody needs, right, to excel in this business. You need to have top-notch customer service, right, and I, I want, I'm sure that uh, we will talk about that sometimes or we've talked about that before. So that is very important and will help. Now, customer lifetime value. So customer loyalty over a period of time. The fact that somebody bought a property from you now does not mean that it's the end of the transaction. They can still buy. So you can have a relationship with them. Like I said earlier, you can keep a healthy one with them and be sure that you can get good patronage as well. So I'll show you some of them. This seven step selling process, which we are, we are used to, like I said earlier, it's just an addendum, preparation, introduction, questioning, overcoming objection, close and follow up, right? They are very important and they are self-explanatory. So my final thought on this, that there's no doubt that customer providing are essential for any sales or marketing team. The more you know about your customer, the better chance you have at personalizing their messages. That, that will undoubtedly put you in with a better chance of combating them, especially when 86% of buyers are more likely to buy from a company that offer personalized experience or experiences. Remember, to base your customer provide offering data rather than guesswork, survey your existing customer, create a new buyer personnel for each distinctive character trait that doesn't already slot within the existing profile. And finally, this is a great way to find and not the leads that you're trying to form into customer. Thank you. All right, so that is it for us. I want to believe uh, we can now go into question and answer, then we can clarify it. Okay, so are we still together? Eric, Dr. Rams, thank you so much. Yeah. Can you hear me, sir? I can hear you, I can hear you. Oh, thank you so much. That was quite impactful. So much detail yeah. and the content is, um, is really very enriching. We thank you so much for your time. We thank you for you know having the patience to have done a good job. I'm sure I'm speaking uh, yeah. for the rest of the staff. I'd like us to hello. Can anybody hear me, please? Can I hear you? Okay. Unfortunately, some of our um, our departmental heads were not uh, able to participate in the program because um, they all had up at the NPR session, we may not know, but they have good representations here. So I'd like us to, you know, like internalize what you just um, experienced. If you have questions, observations, clarifications, this is a good time to bring it up so that uh, Dr. Ayo can do justice to it. Can we get reactions from the house, please? Um, Gambo, are you there? Usman Gambo. Yes, I'm here. Okay, Gambo, please, can you share with us your learnings? Okay, so far, so good. I've learned how to profile my customers. Okay. Do you, do you, do you think uh, that will not get you better results, you know, by profiling your customers? That is... Uh, what we would like to get. How do you think that we impact Yes, doctor. You? All right, okay. Uh. Okay, that is, what doctor is trying to find out is, is there any new thing you learned, you know, from what you used to be? Maybe you can learn to do things differently now. Is there something specific that you took out from the... Um, his, uh, his, his presentation, his presentation, yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay, as I said, I actually learned how to profile my customers, so that will now make me to do my job in a better way. <laughs> okay. The part this time, were you not doing that? I didn't get what you said, Nina. I said prior to this time, uh, were you not, you know, profiling customers? Yes, I was not profiling them yeah. prior to this time. 
Okay, okay, that's 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 a good one. That's it. I know you know my okay. I want to add more to if I'm there, you can help gamble out. I want to believe that we have learned something. We are taking out something from this training that we can use to start doing things differently. That's the essence of this conversation. Ifuama, can I, can we hear you? Okay, well, Joshua. Somebody's hand is up. Tijani. Yes, madam. Tijani, you have the floor. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I thank uh, Dr. Ayo. Thank you for your presentation. Now, my question is that um, after profiling the the prospective customer, um, yeah. I, you know, sometimes when you pro when you profiling some customer and uh, they kind of probably for what have been done before, just check their name probably their contact and most you send them a message probably on LinkedIn by inviting them to be connected. So and then um, when you send a message, probably you didn't get their cell phone contact, you send them a message and they are not responding. What what um my question is that what how long can you have the patience on a prospective customer before you just abandon the, the the customer that you are trying to go after. I think you understand my question, sir. Okay, I get your question. All right, thank you. Now this is it. Uh, for instance, if you use if you are using uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn uh, uh, offers you. Uh, opportunity to to do uh, what do you call it uh, the premium pricing. If you are on the premium pricing, which one meaning, meaning that you, the one you paid for, you maybe you have possibly have, have access more to connect with people, and then you can send them a personalized message. But if you use the general message platform, they may likely know they may not see it, or you may not get a better a good result. So that's what happened. When you use uh, LinkedIn, but if you um, if you do it well, all right. If you do it well with uh, the premium pricing loss level, you may get better better results. Okay. However, whichever one you use, uh, when you are prospecting customers, you just have to wait. Now, maybe you wait for like one week and you didn't get a response. You can send another reminder. Uh, and if that's not working, then you now look, you need to look for alternative. Uh, you know, uh, platform and look at okay, what how else can you get them? Is that you go begin to dig into their uh, either website or other platform? Let me tell you sometimes, okay, part of the thing we do in recruitment is that uh, when we don't get them through the LinkedIn, if we have your have their Twitter handle, you go and follow them. You follow them on Twitter, they may be more interactive, more on Twitter than they are on LinkedIn. So you can exploit different platforms until you get your result. But of course, yes, ensure that you not turn to or create nuisance so that you will not jeopardize the opportunity as well. You have to be made professional until you get results. However, if you're able to get their address and you want to do them a personalized letter proposal, you can do it. But of course, you can track different platforms to get your result. But patience is also very important. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, Tijani, you are clarified? Yes, madam. Okay. Okay, I think we have a reaction from the house. Uh, Sheila, Sheila, are you there? Sheila, we want to hear from you. Hello, Sheila. Who is the game? Okay, please. Does anybody have any more um, clarification, reactions, observations, comments? 
Let's hear you. Please speak out. It's nice to hear your voice. Bello. Okay. Maybe they will respond to you when they hear your voice. Donald, I'm calling names. Dominic. Uh, Dominic. Okay, Abomide Let's... is here. Abomide. Yeah, yeah, okay. Abomide, please, can you tell us um, what you learned from this course? In summary. Okay, please okay. fill the link. We have a link that you need to fill. You can please ensure you fill it. So uh, we'll use it for attendance, your feedback, and then process your e certificate. Okay. Oh, sorry, Mr. Ayo. I think there's a general problem. They can't um, actually speak out, but we can entertain chats. But anyways, it appears that... Yes. Um, it appears that you're anybody understood you properly. I don't know yet. Send your message if you cannot talk. Send your message on chat. We will read it. Anyway, we'll articulate every reaction and then we'll forward them to you. You can always okay, respond right. in your yes and we'll communicate stuff eventually. We also hope to get the slides as well. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we'll go ahead to fill the forms now. How many more minutes do we have? I think we have enough time, okay. So we can fill the forms. Please, can we all go to the chat room, click on the link and fill up the forms. Dr. Ayer, is this something we can finish now? Or would you want us to come back to it after this course? The form, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, you, you copy the link and, and also do after. You'll be fine. You can do it okay. now and all. Okay. Okay, so I'll, I'll we'll come back to you on it. I think that would yeah. be better. So they take their time to fill it. I don't want to fill it in a hurry. That's okay. Okay, sir. So once again, we'll thank you so much, Dr. Ayo. You're always obliging us, your time, your eloquence, and of course, your intellectual, intellectual abilities. It's always good to hear from you. It's always good to enjoy your time. And we hope that uh, the new learnings we've taken today will enrich our processes, you know, going forward. That's actually the essence of having this conversation. So we hope to have you again sometime in the future when we need um, such services rendered. I know you're thank always you. able to. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks thank you so you. much, uh, Nina and your team. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to do this, uh, to hear back from everybody. And uh, as much as uh, we, the conversation can even go beyond now, uh, we are a part of family. The only thing to remain is to give me my dedicated sister. <laughs> Don't worry, we are okay, yeah. I hope you don't mind if I can also give them your contact details. Yeah, that's okay. What okay. is it? Uh, your contact details in case anybody requests for you. That's okay, that's okay. That's, that's okay. Okay. Please remember to send the slides to us so I can yeah, serve I'll, the I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. Especially for the benefit of heads that are not there. Yeah, that's okay. We'll send it. And then uh, we'll also make